Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Bodwich. I'm a teacher at Olympic Hills Elementary. I'm really excited to be able to teach you some math today. We're going to learn about perimeter. We're going to learn how to do a number challenge. And we're going to learn about subtracting decimals. Usually right now I'd be in my classroom, teaching my class, hanging out with my students. And I really miss that. But one of the nice things about being home is I get to hang out with my dog, Olivia, here. She's going to help us with some of the math problems today. Our first learning target today is we're going to understand what perimeter means and calculate the perimeter of rectangles. We're going to do this by coming up with our own strategies to calculate the perimeter of rectangles. What is perimeter? Perimeter is the distance or length around the outside of a shape. Perimeter sounds a lot like perimetro, which is how you say perimeter in Spanish. There's a soccer field near my home that I walk around. If I walk around the whole outside, it's the perimeter of the shape. It's a little different than what you learned about last week, which is Area is the space needed to completely cover a shape. Area is usually measured in square units. Perimeter is usually measured in length units. I'm hoping I can find out the perimeter of the soccer field that I walk around each day. So I walk my dog Olivia there. I want to find out how far we go. Hmm. Well, I know that one side is 110 meters. That means the opposite side has to be at 110 meters as well because it's a rectangle. Opposite sides are equal. Another side is 60 meters. So that means the opposite side is 60 meters as well. The meters, a measure of length, it's 100 centimeters. It's about three feet. Huh. Well, I bet that I can find the perimeter by just adding up all the sides. If I add up each side, I'll know how far I go around the outside of the shape. So I'm going to add up the distance around the outside. 110 plus 60 plus 110 plus 60. For my brain, it's a little easier to do 110 plus 110 and 60 plus 60. So I know that 110 plus 110 is 220. 60 plus 60 is 120. Then if I put those together in my brain, I can add the 20 plus 20 and get 40, and the 100 plus 200 and get 340. I think the perimeter is 340 meters. Now, my partner Lee here actually had a different strategy, so she's going to share that with us, because maybe you have a totally different strategy than we do. Okay, so if I'm looking at the field, I know that the two long sides are the same length as one another. So I think that I would do 110, because that's the length of 1, times 2. And then if I look at the two shorter sides, I see that they're each 60 meters, so they're the same length. So then I think I would add 60 times 2. And then what I would do first is take 110 and multiply it by 2, so that's 220 plus 60 times 2, which is 120. And then I take those two 20s and add them together. So that's 40. And then I take the 1 and the 2 and add them together. So that's 3. So I think the perimeter is 340. So we found the same calculation of the perimeter using two different strategies. I wonder if you can come up with your own strategy to find the perimeter as well. Now that we have some strategies for finding the perimeter of a rectangle, let's use them to solve a problem. This is a question that you might see in your packet or something similar. Which expressions can we use to find the perimeter? An expression is like an equation, but without an equal sign. Okay, so we've got a rectangle here. One side length is nine centimeters. The other is three centimeters. Centimeters are also a measure of length. They're pretty small. I'm going to use my strategy. 
I know that opposite sides of rectangles are equal. So this one must be nine centimeters. And this side must be three. I'm just gonna add them all up. Nine plus nine plus three plus three. Let's say P for perimeter equals. I'm gonna do nine plus nine first. Nine plus nine is 18 plus three plus three. Three plus three is six. 18 plus six, perimeter equals 24 centimeters. Which expression can we use to also find the perimeter? Let's check this one. Nine times two plus three times two. That kind of seems like least strategy. Nine times two is 18 plus three times two is six. Oh, just like with my strategy, 18 plus six. Perimeter equals 24 centimeters. Looks like A. Let's try B. Nine times three plus nine times three. This looks like they multiplied the side lengths. Let's see what happens when we try this. Nine times three. Well, I know my threes. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 plus 27. I'm doing everything inside the parentheses first. Parentheses say, do this first. Oh, 27 plus 27. There's no way that's going to be 24. This strategy doesn't work. All right, final strategy. This is a new one, too. Maybe this is one that you tried. 2 times 9 plus 3. Well, Parentheses say do this first, so 9 plus 3 is 12. 2 times 12. Oh, 2 times 12, P equals 24 centimeters. C works as well. Again, maybe you found other strategies that work for finding the perimeter. If you do, that is awesome. Keep looking for them. All right, we've already found some strategies for determining the perimeter of rectangles. Let's take a quick break. In my class, we like to do breathing and movement breaks. One of our breathing exercises we do is called a mountain breath. Here's how you do it. Hold out your hand like this. Take your finger. Trace your fingers. As you go up, breathe in. As you go down, breathe out. You can also do a movement exercise. Maybe you want to roll your neck around. Maybe you're going to stretch your shoulders. Maybe you're going to get up and do jumping jacks. Whatever's good for you. All right, let's move on to our next thing. We've got a number challenge for you today. This is sweet because it's a game that you can play with yourself. You can play with other people as well. Here's the challenge. You need to make as many numbers as possible, but you have to follow the constraints. Constraints are like rules. Here's the constraints. You're gonna make expressions, and each expression must use all the digits, one, two, three, four. So I could do one plus two plus three plus four, that works. I can't do one plus two plus three. I'm not using four, doesn't work. You can only use the digits one, two, three, or four once in each expression. I can do one times two, plus three times four. I can't do 11 times two plus 34. 
I use the digit one twice. That does not work. Finally, you can use all the operations you know. You can add, you can subtract, you can divide, you can multiply. You can even do more. If you know exponents, do them. If you know square roots, do them. If you know parentheses, use them. All right, let's see if we can find some numbers following our constraints. I'm gonna see if I can try out that first expression I used on the other slide. I'm gonna do one plus two plus three plus four. Cool, okay, I know one plus two is three, three plus four is seven, three plus seven equals 10. Awesome, I found the number 10. I'm gonna put my expression that I used to find 10 in the how it was created space. One plus two plus three plus four. You see me using those parentheses again that says, I did these first, I did these together. Let's try another. This time I might use some multiplication, division, subtraction. Maybe we'll try uh, two times three. Parentheses say, do this first, do this together. Minus two times one. Oh shoot, that doesn't fit my constraints. I used two twice and I didn't use four. I'm gonna have to use four times one. Two times three is six minus four. That equals two. Mathematicians, you can find a ton of different numbers this way. In your packet, your job is to find one through 25, as many as you can. If you find more, that's amazing. The cool thing about this game is that you can play it for five minutes and then come back to it and play it 10 minutes again. You can come back to this over and over again. All right, fifth graders, it's your time. We've got a new learning target. We're gonna learn how to subtract decimals by regrouping tenths into hundredths and hundredths into thousands. We're gonna do it by using grids and base 10 blocks to help us regroup. If you're in fourth grade, stick around and learn this too. You're gonna to get ahead for fifth grade. Let's try subtracting with a grid. The grid's gonna help us line up our place value and help us regroup. Let's start with 3,451 minus 1,644. Well, I know that this is going to be the ones place, the smallest. This is gonna be the tens place. This is gonna be the hundreds place. And this is gonna be the thousands place. Let's start subtracting. One minus four. Ooh, I can't do that, I've gotta borrow. I'm going to go to my tens. I'm going to take one ten and turn it into ten ones. Put together with this one one, that gives me eleven ones. Eleven minus four is seven. Four minus four, or four tens minus four tens. Well, that's pretty easy, that's zero. Four hundreds minus six hundreds. Oh, I can't do that. I have to borrow. I'm gonna to go to the thousands. I'm gonna take one thousand and turn it into ten hundreds. I'm gonna put that together with my four hundreds, and now I have fourteen hundreds. Fourteen hundreds minus six hundreds, it's gonna give me eight hundreds. Thousands. Two thousands minus 1,000. It's gonna give me 1,000. My answer, 1,000 
807. Sweet, so we can subtract with a grid using whole numbers. Let's now try it with decimals. Let's try subtracting with a grid using decimals now. Five and 161 thousandths minus one and 28 hundredths. I know the smallest place value is thousandths. From our decimal, we go tenths, hundredths, thousandths. I'm going to put a th here for thousandths. H, t for hundredths, and t, t for tenths. Finally, an o for one. Let's subtract 1 and 28 hundredths. Well, I have 8 hundredths, 2 tenths, 1 1. I don't have any thousandths, but I can place a zero here to show there's zero thousandths. Let's start subtracting. 1 thousandths minus zero thousandths, it's going to be zero. Oh, 1 thousandth. Sometimes we make mistakes and have to revise. Six hundredths minus eight hundredths. I think we're gonna have to borrow. I'm gonna go to the tenths place. I'm gonna take one tenth and turn it into ten hundredths. I now have sixteen hundredths. Sixteen minus eight is eight. Looks like you're gonna have to borrow again. 0 tenths minus 2 tenths. I'm going to borrow one whole and turn it into 10 tenths. I have 10 tenths minus 2 tenths, 8 tenths. Let me make sure I put the decimal here for, so I don't forget it. 4 ones minus 1 1, 3 ones. That's how we can subtract decimals with a grid. Now let's try another strategy. We can also subtract decimals using base 10 blocks. We're going to think of these as one whole. Maybe you've seen them in the past as a hundred, but since we're using decimals today, we're going to think of that as one whole. We're going to subtract two and 672 thousandths minus one and 305 thousandths. We have our ones, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Let's start by subtracting our thousandths. I'm going to take away five thousandths from each side. Oh, I tried to take away five thousandths, but I could only take away two because there were only two thousandths on this side. I'm going to borrow from a tenth. I'm sorry, I need to revise again. I'm going to borrow from a hundredth. I'm going to make my hundredth into ten thousandths. I've already taken away two thousandths. I need to take away three more thousandths. I'm left with seven thousandths. Okay, now I need to subtract my hundredths. Oh, there's no hundredths over there. I already borrowed one hundredth, so I'm left with six hundredths. Now let's subtract our tenths. I'm going to take away three tenths and three tenths. I'm left with three tenths. Finally, I need to take away my holes and take away my one hole and one hole. I'm left with one hole. Two and 672 thousandths minus one and 305 thousandths equals one and 367 thousandths. All right, guys, final thing. 
I want to leave you with a little spot the mistake. 3 and 46 hundredths minus 2 and 4 tenths. I'm going to try to subtract these, but I might make a mistake. See if you can find it. Oh, actually, this is really easy. I can do 3 and 46 hundredths minus 2 and 4 tenths. 6 minus 4 is 2. 4 minus 2 is 2. Answer, 3 and 22 hundredths. See if you can notice my mistake. Have a great time doing math. Nice job, guys.